Okay, welcome back. So, what we're going to do in this video is we're going to try to explain the observations you guys had in class today with parallel circuits. And parallel circuits is, of course, where there's more than one path, as opposed to series where there's just one. So if things didn't quite work in our lab today the way they did with series circuits. So we're going to try to develop this roller coaster model to try to figure out how to explain those observations. So just as a reminder for terminology, um, voltage is still our fancy way of talking about work and energy. Current is describes how quickly the charge flows by, and of course resistance resists the flow of current. So if it's a good conductor, it has really small resistance, and therefore the current would be large. If it's a bad conductor, it would have large resistance, so the current would be small. Of course, that all comes from the relationship of Ohm's law. So, uh, and by the way, just as a reminder, you can pause, you can go back, and the slides for these are also going to be on the wiki as well, below these videos. Okay. So, parallel circuit. We have more than one path to follow, okay, for the current. So with series, there is just only one route. Here, notice, the route splits. Some of the current can go this way, some of the current can go that way. So there's more than one path. What we noticed in the series circuit was that these two voltages added up to give you this voltage. That's not what we observed today in our lab. What we observed were these voltages all seem to be really similar. So let's try to explain why. And we're going to go back to the roller coaster. So if you remember, in our roller coaster, the idea is we have the battery that's providing the energy, and on a real roller coaster, that's the chain that's providing the energy to get the cars to the top. So we might have all these cars coming up to the top, and they're being provided that energy from the chain lifting them up, okay? So they get to the top of the roller coaster, and this is a pretty cool roller coaster, right? Um, sometimes you might take this path, sometimes you might take that path. So this is a, a roller coaster where cars can kind of split up, and you don't know which track you're going to go on. So that's kind of a cool thing, but keep in mind, each track each resistor is a hill, starts at the top and ends at the bottom. So just like what we talked about for the series circuit, the resistors are hills that convert the energy from one form to another. So this guy converts your energy, bringing from the top of the roller coaster all the way down to the bottom. So you might take that first path right there and whoosh, brings you right down to the bottom. That was a fun time. One, you went through one resistor on this path and only one resistor, hence there's only one hill that brought you to the bottom. But you go around the second time, and you're like, hey, that was fun. Let's see what this path brings us. So the track splits. And this same idea. This one starts at, starts at the top, ends at the bottom. You only go through one resistor, so you only go through one hill. Okay? And then you're back to where you started. So the cars come up, they've got potential energy being given, provided by the power source or the battery. They got a resistor which uses that energy, and you come back and around. Okay? So let's first look at what's happening with the energy. Okay? That's the voltage. So if we go back to the analogy we were using before, since we're talking about energy, potential energy, MGH, what determines the amount of energy is the height. So this is the energy provided from the battery, using B for battery, from the bottom all the way to the top, okay? And this is the energy used by resistor 1. And notice resistor 1, this hill, starts at the top, ends at the bottom. And if you notice resistor 2, same thing. Starts at the top, ends at the bottom. So here you have energy provided, here you have energy used. 
And just visually looking at this, you can see the relationship that you saw in the lab. Check out this height, check out this height, check out this height. What do you notice about all three of these values? They're about the same. And in this case, in our model, they should be the same. So we have a rule for voltages, that the voltage provided by the battery is equal to the voltage used on each part of the circuit. The voltage used on each part of the circuit, they're all equal. Pretty cool. Now, keep in mind, that was different for the series. In the series, the voltage across each resistor added up for the voltage across the battery. Not that case here, because we have separate paths, and each path starts at the top and ends at the bottom. So it's as if, if you take this path, then it's just a one resistor circuit. That's it. Or if you take this path, it's a one resistor circuit. As opposed to the series circuit, where you have to go through multiple resistors or multiple hills before you got to the bottom. Here, you're just going through one hill and you're at the bottom. Okay, so let's talk about what's happening with the current, okay? So, here we have all these cars, and keep in mind with our model, we got a lot of cars, and there's so many cars, I can't even draw them all. So, I'm gonna draw, let's say, five cars right here. So I'm just going to use five to represent their five cars, okay? Now in our series circuit, there was only one track. So there was only one path to follow. Here, notice, we've got two separate tracks. Do all the cars have to go the same way? No, they've got their choice. So let's say, I don't know, three go this way. We start with five and three go this way. Well, if we started with five and three went this way, how many went this way? That's right, two. Because do cars just disappear? If we started with five, we got to end with five. Just they split up. And it's the same thing with electrons. Electrons can't disappear, right? We assume that they're conserved in the circuit. So if Five electrons pass through this point, five electrons have to exit, and they just get split up. And then when we're back to here, these paths come back together, and we're back to seeing those five cars or those five electrons. So, what we just did was we developed a rule for our current. Now, our rule for the current being here we have this current up here being provided by the battery, so I'll call that IB. That comes around, some of the current goes this way, We'll call that I1, and some of the current goes this way. We'll call that I2, and then we're back together again to be the current from the battery. So, based on our model, current can't just appear, so that means the current on each branch, I1 and I2, add up to give you the current provided by the battery, because the current splits up. And keep in mind, this is different from series. Notice, these two rules are reversed. In series, because there was only one path and we had that traffic jam, the current was the same and the voltages added up. Here, notice it's the reverse. Here, the voltages are the same and the current adds up. Okay, now let's talk about the resistance. I'm just going to leave a spot for that. And I'll do my scratch work here. So, the resistance... We, we thought before the total resistance of the circuit would just add up. So suppose I had just this one circuit, my, my one battery, right? And I wanted to replace those two resistors with just one giant resistor we'll call RT. So I have my one battery with my one current flowing through this thing, which we'll call IB. And I wanted to replace these two with just one, but it was an equivalent situation. What we saw in the series was, it was pretty obvious, right? If you want to know the total resistance of the circuit, you, you just add them. Let's see if that's the case here. So one thing we know for sure is Ohm's law has to work everywhere. In other words, the voltage from the battery has to be equal to the current from the battery times the total resistance of the entire circuit. V1 still has to be equal to I1 times R1, right? The voltage here, I1 times R1, and the voltage here still has to be 
I2 times R2. Okay? Ohm's law still has to work. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this statement here, and we're going to do a substitution. If I were to solve this guy for I, that would give me I is always V over R, right? Solve for I. Divide both sides by R. So I'm going to substitute in for this current from the battery. Instead of writing it IB, I'm going to write it, choose a different color so you can see it, VB over RT, right? V equals IR, so I is V over R, but for the battery. It would be the voltage from the battery divided by the total resistance. My I1, well, that would be the same type of thing, except now it's V1 over R1. And my I2, instead of writing I2, I'm going to write V2 over R2. That's just from Ohm's law, okay? So here we have our relationship. It's the same thing as this. This is just another way of writing the current. But we just said all these voltages are equal. So mathematically, if they're all equal, they can all cancel. Right? If I divide all sides by V, and it's the same V, they all cancel. And so what we're left with is not RT equals R1 plus R2. Because these are all on the downstairs. The downstairs of a fraction. So, what's on the upstairs? When we divide both sides by the same thing and everything cancels out, we're left with the number one. So here is our relationship. The resistances don't add up to give you the total. The reciprocal adds up to give you the total. Now you might say, well, come on, isn't that the same thing? Well, here's an example. Here's an example. Let's say I had two ohm resistor. Eh, let's make it a three ohm resistor. Why not? Feeling generous, okay? Feeling generous. So I'm just going to erase some of the scratch work so you don't have to. Um, actually, I'll do it over here. Okay, so suppose I had three ohm resistor. And I had two of them. If it was series, I'd just add those up. Three and three gets me six. But for parallel, we're adding fractions. So I'm not adding three and three. I'm adding one over three plus one over three ohms. And that does not equal, it's no hard fractions, that does not equal six. That does not equal one over six. That doesn't even equal two over six. These are fractions. One third plus another third gets you two thirds. So that's two over three ohms. The units are still there on the downstairs. Now we're not done. We're not done. Because we're not solving for one over the total resistance. We want the total resistance itself. So if one over RT is two over three, we flip it and we get RT over one is equal to 3 ohms over 2, 3 halves or 1.5 ohms. So notice, 1.5 ohms is much smaller than 6. That's a different number. Crazy, huh? We're adding the fractions. So when we have them set up in parallel, the resistance actually goes down. A 3 ohm and a 3 ohm in series would get you 6 ohms for the total resistance of the circuit, but here, it reduces the resistance. A 3 and a 3 brings it down to 1.5 ohms. Crazy. So one of the ways we thought about this, and we can talk about this, is going back to a highway. Remember, what do resistors resist? Resist the flow of current. We go from one path to two paths. Think of what happens on a highway or a road when you increase the number of lanes to make it easier or harder for traffic to flow. So when we have more than one path for the current to follow, 
it makes it easier for the current to flow. So we get less traffic or less total resistance to the circuit. So adding more resistors in series, and when there's only one path, increases the total resistance of the circuit, makes it harder for the current to flow. But adding resistors in parallel increases the number of paths the current can flow, which decreases the total resistance of the circuit, and therefore increases the total current. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so this is the end of part one for the video. Part two, we're going to do an example. You're going to write down your numbers. You're going to do your calculations with this stuff, and that's part of what we're going to do. Don't forget, your calculations are going to go in the uh, Google Doc below. All right? And again, feel free to pause, rewind, come back to this anytime you want, and these slides are going to be uh, on the, the wiki as well below. Good luck.